Drew ends things with Carly over Jason, and later Sam tells Carly how she can help Dante. Wednesday, March 13, 2024. Today on General Hospital, Selena delivers disturbing news to Curtis, Danny turns to Michael to help with Jason, and Anna talks Sunny down. All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. Please note that if you purchase something by clicking on a link within this story, we may receive a small commission of the sale. Curtis meets Marshall at the Savoy. Marshall thought he was going to open the club for him tonight. So what is going on? Curtis has news to share. He found the doctor who misdiagnosed Marshall years ago. His name is Dr. Paul Braddock. Marshall can't believe he's still alive. Curtis says he's retired and lives in a retirement community outside Baltimore. He says they could take a road trip if he wants to. Marshall is in shock and thought he'd be dead, and he never thought he would ever be able to confront the man who misdiagnosed him and caused such problems for him. Marshall thinks maybe he can get some answers about himself and see what kind of man this doctor is. Curtis hopes he and Stella aren't pushing him to do this, and Marshall says they haven't. Marshall says the chance to talk to this doctor fills him with hope, and now he can know what if anything was wrong with him. Marshall thanks him for getting him the answers he needs. Selena Wu enters and states she has business with Curtis. Curtis says their business is over, but Selena has something that may change his mind. Marshall tells her to get the hell out of this club but Curtis says he can handle this. Curtis has nothing to say to her and doubts she has anything he wants to hear. She says, even if it's information on the person who shot you. Curtis thinks she's playing a game and wants to offer him information in exchange for a place for her games. Selena says she is not here to bargain but to give him a warning as they've been deceived. She tells him the man who shot at him was Jason Morgan and he only acts under Sonny's orders. Marshall asks if he is saying Sonny wanted Curtis dead. Curtis doesn't know where she got her information from and calls it whack, because Sonny would never have his son shot. Selena has a theory and suggests something may have gone wrong. The shootings could have been staged by Sonny, and to think about it, as he was never hit during three different attempts on his life, she believes Sonny had a long-term plan to annex new territories with the help of an enforcer that nobody saw coming, Jason. She believes Sonny is done compromising, and anyone who stands in his way is taken out. Selena tells him to think about it and walks out. Marshall tells Curtis this changes everything. Curtis tells his pop not to believe her. Selena only does things that help Selena. Marshall is aware but he should chase any lead he can. And this isn't the time for them to go to Maryland and check out his past. Curtis won't have it. They are going to see that doctor so he can finally be at peace and have closure. At Carly's, she tells Drew that Jason has never failed her. Drew asks what about the last two and a half years during which he let her think he was dead? Is that not failing her? She's sure he came back as soon as he could. Drew tells her to listen to herself. Drew says whatever happened to Jason, they both know she'll be there to help him through it, and he isn't going to stay around and watch it. She asks if he's saying they are done. Drew says all her relationships haven't lasted except the one with Jason. He can't be with her when her heart, her mind, and her trust are with Jason. He won't ride this to the end, it will hurt too much, so he's getting off now. Drew goes to leave and Carly chases after him. She cries she didn't mean to hurt him, and Drew knows. However, the minute Jason came back, they were done. He says he can't and he won't compete with what she has with Jason. He's a businessman, and he knows when to cut his losses. He also can't go to work every day and see her, 
so he'll find someone else to run Crimson, as they know her heart wasn't it, and she was only there for him. Drew tells her to take care and walks out. Drew heads to Sunny's gym and hits the bag when Jordan arrives. She sees he's working out some frustration, and she's here to do the same. She wants to be out there searching for the man who shot Jason, but she's not a cop anymore. She apologizes as she knows the man they are looking for is his brother. Drew hopes the police find him. Jordan is confused. Drew says if Jason is innocent, then he should turn himself in and prove it. Jordan is surprised he isn't insisting Jason is innocent. Drew says he wasn't there, and he doesn't know Jason well enough to say what he would or wouldn't do. He says they are twins, but that's where the similarities end. He doesn't know why Jason does what he does. He reveals he ended things with Carly a few hours ago, because Jason always comes first with her. She says she's sorry, and she's been there. He asks if she wants her turn to vent as he's all ears. Jordan vents that she understands being a cop, but politics is a different thing. He says she could quit, but she won't do that to Laura, and Anna is back as commissioner. She is going to stick this out because a good city government means a better city. Drew is glad Aurora is based here as it makes his company look good. She suggests they work together to find a way to boost Aurora and Port Charles images, so Drew says they should set a meeting. Carly goes to the hospital and asks Sam how Dante is. She says he's critical but stable. Sam asks if she heard from Jason. Carly reveals she's seen him. She tells him what happened last night, and he didn't have time to say anything to her about the shooting or Dant, because Anna and John Cates showed up. She also says Jason was shot. Sam fumes that Jason not only is alive, but may have been the one who shot Dante. Carly says Sam knows Jason wouldn't shoot Dant, but Sam doesn't. Sam doesn't know where he's been, but Dante's been with her helping raise his kid. She says if Jason is the reason Dante is hooked up to those monitors, then she'll never forgive him. She cries that Dante is severely injured, and they don't know when or if he'll wake up. Carly wishes there was something she could do. Sam says there is, if Jason contacts her again, call the police. Sonny meets with Anna in the PCPD interrogation room and asks if there is any evidence that Jason shot his son. Anna goes over the evidence that Spinelli gathered and that they know Dante went after the two men who were headed to the pier. They do know Jason made the 911 call as they identified his voice, so he tried to save Dant. Sunny says she still doesn't know if he shot him though. Anna says they don't have a clear image of the other man and he's disappeared. Jason is likely still alive and he's injured. The sweatshirt wrapped around Dant and had two blood samples on it. One was Jason's and the other was Dante's. She knows he's feeling helpless, but go sit with Dante, don't go looking for Jason. Kate's comes to the station to see Anna, but is told by the cop at the desk that she is with someone. Kate sees her in the interrogation room with Sonny. Chase enters and Kate's asks Chase how long Anna has been meeting with Sonny. He can't say, and John asks if he's not worried that his employer is associated with a known racketeer. Chase says, nope. He says Anna is his superior and he trusts her, and he has his own case to work and walks off. Meanwhile, Anna tells Sonny to let her get justice for Dante. Sonny can't believe they are having this conversation, as he's normally the one protecting Jason from the cops. However, he doesn't know Jason anymore. Kate's interrupts and says he wants to walk through the evidence, but sees she's busy. Sonny tells him they are done, and thanks Anna. John tells Sonny he's sorry about his son. Sonny tells him to prove that the badge means something to him and find the bastard who shot his son. Michael returns home to Willow and says there is no change in Dante's condition. He says Sam's with him, and she's trying to wrap her head around the news that Jason is alive. Danny comes knocking on the door and tells Michael that he needs a favor. Michael invites him in and asks what he needs. Danny explains it's private, so Willow goes upstairs to check on the kids. Danny tells Michael it's hard to explain, 
but he needs to come with him. Michael agrees and they head out. Jason remains in the gatehouse. He removes his long-sleeved shirt and has a black tank top on underneath. He checks his wound and then takes some pills. Danny brings Michael to his dad, and Michael embraces Jason. Jason explains he's been here since last night, and Danny found him. Jason is still in pain and sits down. He says it wasn't fair to bring Michael into this. Jason needs Danny to go back to the house. He's wanted by the police and shouldn't be involved in this any further. He is glad he found him and missed him every day he was gone. Danny asks what will happen now. Jason says Michael will help him figure that out. Danny storms out, and Jason asks Michael to go after him and see that he gets to the house. Michael and Danny go back to the gatehouse instead, and Michael asks Willow to help him. He explains that Jason is in the boathouse and badly wounded and needs a nurse. She grabs her bag, and Michael gives Danny his phone to keep in touch as Danny's phone was taken when he was grounded. Willow and Michael go to the boathouse, and Jason insists he doesn't want her involved. She says, too late. Michael says Danny is at their place with the kids, and Jason is surprised to learn they have two children now. Michael asks what happened, and Jason explains he was with another man named Hamish, and he's the one who shot Dante. Jason helped Dante, and shot Hamish when he tried to take him out. Michael believes Jason saved Dante's life, but Jason says he's the reason Dante was shot. Michael goes back to the gatehouse and tells Danny that Willow is staying with Jason. He also says his father is a good man, he didn't shoot Dant, and when he can he will explain to them why he did what he did. Michael's phone rings, Danny hands it to him, and it's Ned looking for Danny. Michael says he's here, and they were playing video games, but he'll send him up to the main house. Michael tells Danny before he goes that nobody can know about this. Back in the boathouse, Willow gives Jason some fluids to drink and says she'll be back with blankets and more fluids. She later returns and covers up a sleeping Jason and says, Welcome home, Jason. On the next general hospital, Jason explains where he's been. John tells Carly that he needs her help. Drew says, This is not something I wanted to say in a text. Sonny tells Lois, I will never forgive him and I'll never forgive myself. Michael asks Jason, what happens if you don't finish this? Jason tells him, something I can live with. 